So this is a little different. I have in my hands an art snacks box and I don't know why, but it showed up in my PO box. But I have a lot of art supplies, so I thought maybe it'd be cool if I passed this on to one of you. But before that, let's find out what's inside. Oh wow. That's like really jam-packed. Like it's a kind of smaller box for subscription boxes, but it's really quite full. And I like that it's like the size of art supplies, so there's not like a bunch of wasted space, but that also means there's no paper, I assume. Crybaby extra sour bubble gum. Ooh, and a sticker. So this month, I believe these are different every month. And this one has like a, oh, kind of, it's kind of the texture of like one of those composition notebooks. So it's reminding me of like back to school. That's kind of cool. The pen is blue, but it says it's in the color black. The Zebra Sensations brush pen with a super fine tip. I feel like most brush pens are pretty thick. Really pointy, but we'll open up and see when we get to that point. Also, it's another one. This one's a medium tip, also in black. Oh, and there's another one! <laughs> a fine tip brush pen in the color black. Um, oh, this one was super fine. Super fine rata chick, you know, and then this one's just fine. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's just fine. Oh, whoa, okay. There's also Prussian blue watercolor. Yeah, uh, it's the artist watercolor in Prussian blue by M. Graham and Co. 15 milliliters of watercolor in a nice little tube. There's also, feels like, is there two or maybe just one thing wrapped up inside here so it gets to feel like Christmas. Open it up. Ooh. I almost got it. I was like, I really want to be able to put this back together for whoever I send this to. Oh, there is two things. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> There's this super thick uh, Faber Castell watercolor pencil. Look, look, look at the girth on this thing. Look at it. Mm. There's a nice fine Princeton art size zero round brush. Look how pronto. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that is the ice supplies for this box. I actually should look up how much this one costs since I didn't pay for this. I don't know. Let's find out together. It's funny because I was going to buy the watercolor box for September, but they were sold out. They do like a, I think it's quarterly for watercolors and you can get like, it's, I think it's like 80 bucks. Like it's a, it's a, it's a bit pricey for it, but it's like a really big box. So I don't think this one's $80. It says you'll get four to five full size premium art products as well as a menu describing them each. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, we got six little thingies. Oh, and it says there's a menu in here. That's this. So it's the list of the supplies. It looks like you can get 10% off your first box if you go to their website. Okay, so it looks like it is $24 per month and free shipping. So it's like, is that more than pallet packs? Is that more than scrawler box? There's a joke. It says, who's a rabbit's favorite artist? Edward Hopper. But um All right, so the first thing that they listed on here is the M. Graham & Co. Artist Watercolor. They say this retails for $15.29 a tube. I've never bought this before. That's that's crazy. Not only is this paint made using honey, aw, to keep moisture intact in the tube and on the palette, it also contains high amounts of pigment to provide intensely bright and rich color. How do I open this? So something I've noticed after I pulled it out of the packaging is all the letters are in Japanese, except for the word zebra, so the brand name. So I have no idea whether it's, you know, the fine point or not <laughs> once it's opened. But this one is the medium. Zebra Sensations brush pens offer incredible versatility. The super fine has a blue body, the fine tip has a gray body, and the medium tip has a black body. They feature permanent water resistant pigment ink that delivers deep and rich black color. The flexible brush nibs have excellent bounce. Mm, nice. And deliver consistent ink flow, responding to changes in pressure with ease. Super fine. The blue is a super fine tip. It's a little scratchy. Kind of expected it to be more moist. Like if I go fast, do you see what's happening? Do you see how it gets kind of dry at the end? But if you go slow, it's like really nice and dark and pigmented. But if you try to be have any like sort of speed, it kind of like fans out and gets a little dry. Also, let's see, let's draw really light and then thick. Okay, yeah, you definitely can get some different line widths with this. Pretty cool. So that's the super fine. Super fine. Ooh, look at that. Look at all the different line widths you can get. That's really, really cool. And it says those retail for $2.50 each. All right, the next thing on the menu <laughs> is the Princeton Synthetic Sable Round Brush. So it's very, very tiny. It's like a red mahogany kind of color. Lastly, 
the Faber-Castell Albright Door Magnus Watercolor Pencil. Do, 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 do. In emerald greens, they said is a staff favorite and it retails for $3.99. It has a 5.3 millimeter core. That's ideal for large scale drawing. The jumbo size is gentle on the wrist so you can use it for long periods of time without any discomfort. It's 100% water soluble and remains vibrant, dry or wet. And it's light fast as well. Hmm, cool. So it says we take this brush, dip that in water, brush it onto here, and then draw with it. I'm getting a thicker line. What if I just dip this straight into the water? Interesting. That is such a weird texture drawing with a wet pencil. It like just glides. It's almost like it's gonna run away with me. Brush them out. My favorite um, watercolor pencils are ones that like you can really spread this out and you don't see like any lines. Cool. I kind of need a better brush than this though. <laughs> this one is a little too tiny. But let's try out the watercolors. Oh dear. Yeah. Ew, it looks like a little grub. It looks... doesn't that look like a living thing? Ew. Ooh. All right, let's see what color this is. It's supposed to be Prussian blue. Want to see? Ooh, look at that. That is pretty, isn't it? It looks really good with that green. Let's add some more water and see what kind of tones we can get. Pretty cool. Okay. It's an efficiently shaped box because it fits all the art supplies so neatly. And like it was able to fit all of these supplies in this box. So yeah, proud of that. I like the shape of it. <laughs> The Art Snacks Challenge. Use all of the products in your box to create an original piece of art. Okay, so now we have to draw something using all of these supplies. So, it's definitely going to be very line work heavy. That looks like what we're leaning towards. And then we'll have to do any sort of coloring with green or blue. Yeah, it just says try to use all of the supplies. Okay, so I'm allowed to use more than just this. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. Would you like to see more of these... Um, Art Snacks box in the future, because like I said, I don't know how this one ended up on my desk right now, but it's here. And uh, I know a lot of you um, like when I do the unboxing of art supplies. I know I get a lot of comments of people saying they really like when I unbox these things. So let me know if you'd like to see more of these in the future, because I can totally uh, sign up for that if you'd like. And if you're actually interested in getting these exact supplies on your desk, <laughs> check the description. However, I've decided to do that because I haven't figured that out yet. I'm kind of just warming up since I don't have an idea of what to draw. Warming up because I haven't drawn anything today. So it's a pretty good idea. Just stretch out these uh, ligaments and muscles and everything. All right, not getting anything from that. Let me grab a pencil here. Start taking this seriously. I kind of want to just have this sticker out just for aesthetic purposes. How cute. <laughs> look at that hair. Holy moly. Oh, look at that hair. Jeez, that's neon. I could do that. Could draw someone with like crazy blue green hair. Okay, so that's an idea. Do I want to do something like that? Then I can have like a sort of go like really crazy and illustrative with the brush pens on like the face. Go with just like a uh, contrasting completely white face, like the paper white face. Just use this flat brush that I never use. It's getting some love today. And then it would be like blue at the top. And then it would have to practice my blending down into green. Grab some of this. Try to blend. Ooh. I've never done it like this before, but that's kind of interesting. Because I still have like the blue on the brush. But then I'm adding in the green. Not quite as neon as I want it to be, but I guess it's watercolors. It's not going to be neon. Hey, okay. And then if I use like the fine brush with some of that green, then I can add like details that go outwards. Ooh, Ooh that's actually a really vibrant color there. What if I go in with this now? Ooh, that's kind of crazy. Cool. And then you can blend out bits of it that you want and leave some of them. Yeah. That could be cool. Maybe something to play with. Hopefully I think, I think I could do a little bit better with that. You know, if I did a full scale version. Mm -hmm. All right, looking at these two, I think I'll have more fun with this one. So I'm gonna go with the face cause I just really like drawing faces, but I gave a bird a try. So <laughs> Ooh, just move this somewhere safe. 
I got some Canson XL watercolor paper here. I'm still on the lookout for better watercolor paper, so if you have any recommendations, let me know. But we are going to uh, start on this. We got a nice big head. I just realized the last thing I drew was also a big head on a piece of paper. Maybe I'm just going through one of those phases <laughs> where what I draw are big heads with big hair. Let's just try to block out the hair first. Think of it as a more simple shape. And then it'll be easier maybe to tackle. Do I want some flowers in her hair? It's giving off an aerial vibe. I think it's gonna be really fun to add that line art because it's gonna be a very big part. I think like the main focus of this is going to be like trying to put as many details in it as possible with those pens. So I do want to lay out some pretty good groundwork with the pencil so I hopefully don't make too many mistakes. Oh, that eye is way lower than the other eye. I just noticed. The eyes just don't feel right to me. Maybe I need to look at it from a different angle. Or I could just try again. Sometimes that helps. Okay, when I turn it this way, this eyebrow, this eye looks really, really low. But like every other angle, it looks kind of fine. So I'm confused. Yeah, don't love that one either. I think I'm trying to be too realistic and I don't have the skills to pay those bills, so it's just not working out. <laughs> Maybe her ear's too far back as well. Maybe that's what's throwing some things off. Her head is like really small looking. Now her neck's too big. <laughs> I'm gonna go to those days. But now that eye looks way too high. Why don't we just redo the whole head? I mean, <laughs> at this point, <laughs> I think I liked it best the very first time. <laughs> Sad as that sounds. Maybe if I start with the eyes open and then close them later, that'll help me out. Pretty simple pointy nose. Some lippies. Oh boy. Maybe she got some wicked eyeliner going on. Ooh. Alright, I think I'm getting somewhere now. Feeling a little happier with this because if I turn it this way, it doesn't look too super janky like it did before. So maybe, maybe I'm getting somewhere. There we go. Okay, I'm much happier with this face. <laughs> I feel like it has a lot more personality. Those cuff earrings. Is that a thing? Cuff earrings? Let's add like a hairline here. What's a part? Part. That's what it's called. Oh, and I was going to do flowers, wasn't I? Mm. Maybe I'll skip the flowers. I really like this part. I think it looks really cool. Like it's so straight. Try to figure out that hair. It's a little messy over here. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Instead of flowers, maybe some face tattoos. <laughs> kind of like freckles, but on the top of her forehead. Oh, and then I wanted to have that necklace. Remember? Remember? Perfect. Okay, yeah, this is going in a direction that I'm liking. Okay, much better, much better than whatever I had before. I'm a little lost with this hair, so what I'm gonna do is go in and start inking the face. Ooh, that just flew right at me. <laughs> and then come back to this. So I'm not gonna ink that yet until I've figured that out, but let's work on the face. So I'm gonna just lightly erase that I can see what I'm working with. Hopefully I'll put them in the right spot this time. Some like illustrative eyelashes. <laughs> I might go in that with a smaller one and do a little bit better with that. Okay, let's go to the gray one, which is the fine. Oh, that's right. I can't go too fast or it gets really dried out. That'll look better once that's filled in. Trust me, trust me. <laughs> nice thick eyebrows. So I can just get the base of everything lined up. Then I can go in and start maybe using the super fine one and adding some like texture with some details. There we go. And her neck. I can do this ear. I think I know what I'm doing with the ear. I think I'll need the fine one for that. I don't trust myself with this thicker brush. There we go. Got a nice little ear over there. Um, oh, the mouth. Not sure if I put those teeth in the right place. It's too late now. <laughs> And 
yeah, I think I can switch to the finer point now. Work some more on those eyes. Which one was that? The blue? Yeah, blue. Super fine. I had kind of the illusion of shading by using some hatching. And I can use that technique of, uh, I can actually use that fact that it like dries up on a swoop to my advantage to get an even lighter line. Look at that. Okay, maybe a little shadow under the lip. Shade inside the ear a little bit. Definitely different than my normal style. I think that's what I'm having fun with. It's just that this is so different than what I would normally draw. Ooh, I just realized that nostril makes no sense and now I'm trying to hide it and I think I'm making it worse. If I thicken the line at the bottom of this nose piercing, it kind of makes it look like it sticks out, you know? It's a bit of a shadow of sorts. Just trying to make these eyelashes look more realistic and I kind of just ended up with what looks like a centipede on her eyes. <laughs> it's not terrible. I've seen worse. I've done worse. I'm just going in the fine point because it's what I've kind of gotten used to. And I'm starting to add in some strokes of hair. Trying to follow that sketch that I've laid out for myself. Feels like it's drying out. I don't know if it is. I hope not because I wanted to give this to somebody so that they could use it. But I'm getting down to that part of the hair that I don't really know what it needs to look like. And that's where I'll usually get really lazy and just sort of scribble. But I want to try and take a look at this and really figure out what hair does and what it looks like when it would be in this sort of, you know, shape. <laughs> yes. If I just keep finagling it every time, I'm never going to really learn. Another thing that might be fighting these um, pens a bit more than they're probably meant to is the watercolor paper. Because it, I mean, it's not the toothiest, but there is a tooth to this paper. Where how are we doing so far? <laughs> right, this is where I'm going to need to take a look at this hair and try and figure out some kind of logical layout. <laughs> okay, so we wanted this one to come around like that. That's probably fine. I think that makes sense. We have a strand coming over here. And we have some hair coming out this way. Okay. There we go. I think that makes sense. So let's uh, go all in then, shall we? All we have to do is just follow the lines I've already made. Awesome. All right. Oh wait, I missed this part. All right, we're about halfway done. <laughs> now just the other half to go. Even though this is what a fine point or extra fine, super fine. That's what it was. Even though this is super fine, like it's not the most super fine that I've ever used. It's actually really quite wide. So I'm glad that I decided to use the whole sheet of paper. I was going to cut this in half and go with half it, but I think I would have had a lot. I would have run into a lot of troubles if I had done that because these are pretty thick. I'm like, hey, I want to draw logical hair. And then I draw the biggest swoop, hair swoop <laughs> in history. This is starting to get really, really scratchy. I don't know if you can see but the texture of this pen is getting, I feel like scratchier as I go. Look at all that hair. Look at it. I think it's fun, adds a little something. There we go. Oh, this one's a little short. All right, now we go through and erase everything. I could go over actually with the thicker one and like go around the outside edge, create a border. Maybe just in a few places. Add some interest. There we go. I'm use a pretty big round brush here. And start adding in some color. We want blue at the top, green at the bottom. I'm going to first just add the slightest bit of this. That can dissolve later. Probably end up doing a couple layers of everything, so this is just the first layer. I'm not entirely sure how I should go about this. Maybe I'll just start blending this out. Just so I have some color on the page. Oops, I just put my hand right in the water. And then if I go over with this, in any places I want it to be darker, we can get some instant shading. Look at that. I think some of the line is actually blending into the color, which is a bit of a problem. Because I did the line out of the whole piece already. <laughs> continue uh, blending this. <laughs> not sure if you can build these up as well as I may need to. <gasps> oh no, I got smudges. No, no. It was on me. 
Oh no, what is happening? That's worse! Well then, maybe she's just a little dirty in the chin there. Just try to blend out the colors. I'm not sure if I want it to go like just straight into blue or blend it a bit better. Or do I want like strands of hair that are still blue that kind of like contrast with it? No, I went inside the white lines again. Dang it. <laughs> Try to spread the blue farther down, maybe. Looks kind of cool. Here it's a little janky. And maybe it's my blending skills. Or it's that paper starting to eat away. Ooh, I just realized I made the mistake of uh, coloring the right side of her. Now this is all wet and I can't go and do the left side because I'm right-handed. I could flip this over. Start working on it. <laughs> There we go. How does that look? Is that a better smoother gradient than I've had in the past? I used some techniques that I learned in that study where I used just one color of watercolor and painted a whole illustration with it. And I kind of used what I learned from that to create this gradient. So that's like one color, but you can get a couple tones, you know? A nice smooth tone, tonal gradient, <laughs> tonal gradient. I keep going outside the lines. My bad. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Ooh, to add some tonality. There's a word for you. <laughs> yeah, right here. <laughs> the paper was starting to just like erode. So we've got a little jankiness. <laughs> but the rest of it's kind of fun. I mean, the rest of it, any mistakes you see were actually made by me. That's what I'm saying. Let's do these eyebrows. See if I can get in here without putting my hand in any of the other colors. <gasps> what if she had one blue eyebrow, one green eyebrow? Oh, we can go in with that fine point brush. And draw on some extra strings. Oh, I forgot about that green eyebrow idea. Dang it! <laughs> it's really hard to get a lot of pigment this way. Ooh, I just got that all over my desk. Probably going with this. Just draw on a little bit there. Green eyeliner, maybe. There we go. How's that? That was really, really fun. I wonder if I could go in with, um, maybe with this super fine brush. Grab some blue and try to add some strands here. Maybe that'll make it look a little more like hair. I mean, I feel like this area is so, I feel like the area over here is so botched at this point, I can't really help it, but maybe over here I can add some blue strands. I'm not used to using such a skinny brush. Could probably add some strands up there. Oh jeez, oh jeez. Yeah. I'm just, Using a dirty rag to clean something cleaner than it. <laughs> I wonder if I could take, like, I've got my Posca pen right here. I wonder if I can try and fix this area. Oh, but that's whiter than the paper is. <laughs> kind of clean that area a smidge. There we go. There we go. Hey, look at that. There we go. What do you guys think? That was really, really fun. <laughs> I feel like I've should have used better paper. Why do I keep using this paper? This is the Kansen uh, XL watercolor paper. It's just, just no good, no good. I'm gonna stick all this back in the box and I'm gonna give it to one of you guys. So check the um, description for how I'm giving this away. To whomever sent me this, thank you very much. I had a lot of fun and I'm super excited to pass these on to someone who can show them a little bit more love than I probably will in the future because I tend to just put my art supplies in a box and then they never see the light of day again. <laughs> so I think that'll be a good idea. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.